for a long time, going back to the 80s. I've been kind of obsessed with James Brown, his drummers, the breakbeats that hip-hop guys were pulling from his old records. It only got worse when this record came out in the, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s, with uh, the complete funky drummer and then the bonus beat reprise. I wanted to know how can I recreate those sounds through a lot of research, I discovered that Clyde Stonefield and Jeff Starks back in the late 60s were playing Vox drums. And a year or two ago, I found this kit in uh, the same sizes, same configuration, just a slightly different finish from what they were using. And I did a whole restoration. You can see the video here on YouTube. But there was something missing because it wasn't the actual finish. It wasn't the exact kit that they were using. That's been kind of my holy grail. Wait till I show you what just showed up in this box. One of my specialties as a session drummer is recreating vintage breakbeats, old sounds, old records. And I've got really deep into the funky drummer break. If you want to know how I recreated the break as close as we possibly could, follow the link below to my site creating the sound. There's a very in-depth video about what it takes to actually do a proper sample recreation with probably the holy grail sample of all time, the funky drummer break beat. And here it is, a mid-1960s set of Vox drums in the Luxus configuration in the very rare and super cool to me red croco wrap. As an 8 by 13 inch rack tom, a 16 by 16 inch floor, and a 14 by 20 inch kick drum. It's made in West Germany by the company Trixon, who rebranded them as Vox drums in the US. One really cool feature, it has all the original heads top and bottom, including the original Vox logo bass drum head, has the original Vox logo bass drum T rods. There's even a matching snare, which is arriving shortly. It looks like all the parts are original aside from the floor tom legs, which if I had to guess, I'd say they were 60s Tama or Pearl. Some of the plastic backing plates behind the tension casing are cracked, which is really common on these old Trixons, but a lot of them aren't. So I'll put the cracked ones in some out of the way place where no one will see them. I have some serious restoration work ahead of me as these drums have seen a lot of use over the past 50 or 60 years, and this wrap is really fragile. One final note, the toms and mounting brackets have these slotted tension rods, which I absolutely hate using, and I'm definitely going to be swapping them out for some modern drum key operated rods. However, I did learn something between the last Fox restoration I did and this one, which I'll share with you in a minute. Two other points to mention, I got pretty close with the hammer tone spray paint on the hoops on the one that I had to touch up, but it's not exact. Here are the two side by side if you want to get an idea. Finally, I've been an Aquarian endorser since the early 90s, and ordinarily on an old kit like this, I would swap out the heads. However, I am keeping these original heads. Every one of them has the Trixon logo on it. Okay, let's take the hardware off and start restoring these drums. I have no way of proving this, but I am willing to bet this is the first time anyone has ever taken the head off of this 13 inch rack tom. I can still smell the lacquer from inside the shell. That's pretty cool. Because as I mentioned, all the original heads were here. I doubt they would have gone to the store and bought more Trixon branded, you know, Remo ambassadors if they had to replace one of these. And the bottom bearing edge is pristine and it's just a full round over edge. It doesn't matter how careful I am when I'm taking out these screws that are holding the tension casings, they keep snapping. They're just standard seven millimeter metric screws. So it's not really a crisis. I can get more, but I'm trying to keep it original. They all snapped in the same position, closest to the bearing edge. You can see, I think this kit has been exposed to some moisture. And I did learn about uh, getting those screws out using WD-40 and vice grips. So I'm going to have a fair amount of that on this project. And the trend continues on the floor tom. These drums have definitely seen some moisture, as you can see, with all the rust on the screws. And every time one of the screws snaps, it's 
nearest the bearing edge. I haven't had one on this side snap yet. I'm developing a theory why the screws are snapping and many of the backing plates are snapped. If you look at the screw that holds it all together, there's no lock washer. And none of these drums that I've ever seen have them. And so my theory is they had to screw these really tight to the shell so that they didn't back loose during playing, which puts a bunch of pressure on the backing plates, causing them to crack. And then, you know, 60 years later, if you try to take them off, the screws snap because they were stuck under so much pressure. That's my theory. And this is how many casings had a screw snap off. Holy cow, it's a lot. Got the last bit of hardware off, which was the floor tom brackets that were added on. You can definitely see the outline of where the original Trixon bracket was. This is kind of ugly, but you know, what are you gonna do? So a couple of parts to find and replace on this particular contention casing, both screws snapped. And the one cracked bass drum spur bracket. I have the really rusty stuff soaking in evaporust. Mainly it's the nuts, bolts, screws, and everything else is soaking in a vat of water and Dawn dish soap, which does a great job. Soaks overnight, wash it, let it air dry in the morning. It's a fresh new day. These parts have been soaking overnight. A lot of rust. And the parts soaking in Dawn will hopefully grow up nicely. And I'm gonna try some of the Dawn on the heads to see if I can clean these up a little bit. They've obviously seen a lot of use over the past, I don't know, 60 years or something. Here's an old school detail I haven't seen in a long time. On the bass drum, batter head, it's the old uh, Dr. Scholl's moleskin patch for uh, where the beater hits. When I was a kid, I saw that a lot since, I don't know, the 80s or 90s when head companies started making their own, which are frankly much more durable. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. So here's a nice surprise. My good friend, Andrew Marsh, who is a badass drummer and a fellow drum uh, enthusiast, let's say, to make it nice for both of us, is coming by. He heard about the kit. He wants to help clean it up. So I'm very happy to have four hands on this job instead of two, because a uh, lot of detail here. Mr. Marsh. I heard we were storing some drums. Dang, you came prepared. Let well, me at him. Welcome to 1967 or so. Oh, well, I can't say I wanted to be around in 67, but... <laughs> 67 slash 2023, I can handle that. There we go. It's all in the service of Clyde and Java. Yeah. The glamorous work of vintage drum restoration. Yeah, this is it. It's a lot faster with two people, I will say that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> Stole my wife's hair dryer for this job. Turned out pretty nice, right? It did. It does wonders for your hair as well. well I wouldn't know. I don't have it. <laughs> Never gonna be a uh, decorator showpiece kid, but it's okay. Hopefully, it'll last another sixty years. Drew, thank you so much. That was fun, Dylan. Come back and play it when they're all put together. I, I can't wait. Let's do it. All right. It's a rainy Sunday. Trying to keep this project moving. It's been about a week since I last did anything on it. Trying to fix some of the wrap with some. 3M fast bond. See if we can stabilize it. Some of it I'm just gonna have to leave and be really careful. It's a delicate finish. Okay, that took care of the worst of it. I haven't talked about the snare drum much. It is obviously the matching snare to the kit. It's not as important to me simply because Clyde and Jabo clearly didn't care for these drums and use the Ludwig Superphonic for all the classic breakbeats that uh, I'm most interested in. But it's still a cool drum. Uh, 8 lug, 5x14, some funny details here. Check out the internal muffler, which is sort of permanently bolted to the shell. And check out the uh, tensioning system, that wing nut. It works. Pretty... Uh, Pretty rusted. This drum definitely saw more moisture than any others. 
And then the snare strainer and butt, I'll show you in a minute. That's a, that's a wacky little feature. The snare drum is the only drum with replacement heads. Uh, it did have the original snare side head, but it is destroyed, so that goes in the trash. So instead, I'm gonna put my preferred Aquarian heads on, texture coated on top, regular classic clear underneath, and they fit beautifully. I know I've discussed how much I hate dealing with these slot head tension rods on Trixon, Vox, 20s Leedies, Premier, Sonar. I am just not a fan. And these, of course, are a very specific metric thread, so modern tension rods do not fit. However, it just so happens that DW True Pitch is exactly the same thread. So, in my case, I got a whole bunch of Pacific True Pitch tension rods, 42 millimeters. They work just fine. They fit exactly. You can use a regular drum key, and they're really affordable. The new ones are ever so slightly shorter, but it doesn't matter. They fit just fine. It's now been about a week. I had to replace a few broken parts, two casings, one tom bracket, I believe. And also for the snare drum, I've started putting it back together and realized that I actually need the 50 millimeter Pacific true pitch th uh, tension rods, but they work great. I already did the, uh, the top side. So I'm gonna finish putting the snare drum together now, and then I'll show you the snare strainer and the snare wires in particular. As best I can tell, the only snare wires that would fit are these very specific Trixon branded snare wires. And you need these parts to hold it all together. So this little piece attaches it to the strainer. Next, this little backing plate attaches. And then finally, this tiny little cotter pin holds the whole thing together. I mean, you know, it's on there, it's not going anywhere. But could you imagine being on tour with this system and you lose one of those pieces or you break your snares and have to find specific Trixon branded snares somewhere in middle America in the middle of a tour? Oy. These wires have definitely seen some use over the decades. It's all together. Let's see if this strainer actually works. The strainer feels like the absolute slightest vibration is going to set it flying off. Almost no tension there. Let's see if this is gonna work. Usually on a vintage drum like this, I would just replace the strainer and butt with something from Indy or something that fits, but these are a very particular hole spacing, so I'm kind of stuck with the strainer and butt system. Sounds kind of cool for a few seconds before the snare wires turn off. So here's my short-term solution. You know, turn the snares on, Velcro them in place, not going anywhere. I don't know, almost an Amy Winehouse kind of vibe to it. Definitely a vintage sounding snare. This is not anything any modern designer is gonna come up with. The bass drum is assembled. It came together as you'd expect. The holder for the cymbal arm was missing pieces, so I just put some black fabric in there to uh, Cover up the empty hole. I won't be using that. I'm using felt strips with the original heads and sort of keeping with that uh, late 60s vibe. As best I can tell, the T-rods are the only metal parts that Trixon actually created with the Vox logo. These are kind of cool. All right, thrown together with only the most minimal tuning. This definitely has. Got that tone. Got to do a little more muffling to get that kind of annoying out of there. So I'm going to do my old uh, upholstery foam trick, which I did on my last Fox kit as well. Tony from GMS Drums taught me this. It's just one inch upholstery foam. Cut it to size. Works very well. There we go. It all came together as it should, and it so has that tone with these old heads. One of my favorite Clyde moments is the solo that he plays on Cold Sweat at Boston Garden in 1968. It's on YouTube. You can find it. It's amazing. And that's kind of the tuning that I usually go for on a drum like this. There it is. And I've got my, I've had this Reunion Blues leather pad forever to uh, protect the finish as best I can. Because, you know, 
This finish has taken a beating over the decades. As I mentioned, this drum is probably in the worst shape just because of the uh, aftermarket floor tom leg brackets. I tried to find a set of three matching proper Trixon brackets. No luck. So I ended up buying a set of three of the Indy brackets from uh, Indy Drum Company in Michigan. They will fit the original holes. They're very adjustable. They work great, sound great. Josh makes great stuff. And, you know, one day if I find a set of three of originals, I'll replace those and use these on something else. As I mentioned, so many of the screws that hold the tension casings to the drum snapped, and I basically have none of the originals left for the floor tom, so I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store and get some replacements. Let's see what I can find. No one's gonna see it, you know. It's just inside the drum and they will hold it together just fine. The parts are all on the floor tom. It's really a mishmash in there. There are some original screws, some new ones, some of the casings only have one screw holding them together, the extra holes at the tom brackets. But again, no one's gonna see it when the heads are on and hopefully it sounds good. It looks like this drum was probably used to store the rack tom if I had to guess. Uh, that's a pretty telltale sign. <laughs> and uh, you know, hopefully the bottom edge is in good shape. It's assembled. It definitely has the vibe. That was the last piece of the puzzle. It's time to tune this kit so that it hopefully sounds like, you know, Clyde Ajabo tuna. I could tend to get obsessive about stuff sometimes, including the funky drummer breakbeat and specifically how it was played, how it was recorded, why it sounds the way it does, why it feels the way it does. And one of the most amazing hours of my life was spent with Alan Leeds, who was James Brown's tour manager in the late 60s through 70s and did a whole bunch of other things and has had a mind boggling career and uh, still going strong. I can't recommend his book highly enough. Get this run, buy this book, it's amazing. And Alan really opened my eyes to something. I was trying to figure out, you know, Funky Drummer was recorded at King Studios in Cincinnati, the late 60s, which is kind of a, you know, midline studio for a record label. And, you know, did the studio have any kind of crazy drums that made it sound that way? And, and Alan said, nah, they just, you know, bring their bring their touring kit off the bus, set it up in the studio, because that's what they're used to playing, and that's what it sounded like. Which, right, of course, yeah, it's this, the Vox kit, stage, studio, whatever. Uh, Alan sent me this, which clearly shows Clyde doing exactly that at King Studios, except for that Ludwig Superphonic snare drum, which is the world's most recorded snare drum, I believe, and there are a billion of them out there. The challenge is to make it sound like Clyde Stubblefield. If you're interested, please look on my website, Creating the Sound, and the podcast page with Alan has a whole bunch of additional information on everything I found in, in trying to track down the sonics of the funky drummer break. Anyhow, it's show and tell time. Drew, the drums. This is them? This is the <laughs> same kit. Wow. Yeah, they look a lot better when they uh, get them out of the tub of well, dish know, soap. I never got to see them in the completeness before. Yeah. Um, Cause they were in pieces by the time I got here to help you like clean them up. I'm so thankful that you're just crazy enough. To <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you're, you're an accomplice, you know? <laughs> These are like 60 years old. Yeah. With the original heads. With the original heads. I'm ready for James to say, can I count it all? I'm ready for James to find me because I. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the doc. The doc. Yeah, this is it. This has been a really fun project and a big shout out to Drew for all your help and encouragement for this craziness. Also, a big thank you to Clyde Stubblefield, Javel Starks, and James Brown for all the incredible music you made. A personal shout out to Hank Shockley for using the Frankie Drummer Break in uh, Fight the Power back in 1989 and turning my mind inside out. Still uh, recovering to this day. I'm using this kit in my studio for sessions, breakbeats, loops, and samples. If that's something you're interested in, find the link in the description below. And let's make some music together. Thanks for watching. <laughs>